I will label this, I believe, I will label it like a blue or something, if I have a, a nice blue. Blue might be nice. So, what's the name of this big bone right here? Frontal. frontal. Here we go, that's the frontal region. Okay. Now, if this is the frontal bone, we know that this bone right here is the bone that makes up the side of the head. Parietal. So that's your parietal bone. All right, so parietal bone is on the side of the head, right here. So now that we know that frontal has to be beside parietal, if we go over to this lateral view, we can use that same type of rationale. That's got to be the frontal, which means that the one right beside it has to be the parietal. And you can really see how large that parietal bone is from that view, okay? Now, okay, that's cool. Let's go down here. What's the name of the lower jaw? Mandibles. Mandibles. Anybody know the name of this bone? This is the bone that makes up our upper jaw. Maxilla. Maxilla. Nicely, that's why I drew this three quarter view so you can see right into that orbit and see those three holes. You can't see any of those holes in that left orbit because he's angled away. Okay, we'll talk about the names of those here in a second, but first let's walk through these bones. There's two little bones on top of the nose nasal bone. Okay, see these two little guys? So this guy and that guy are both the nasal bones. What's the name of this bone right here, right beside the nasal bone? Trick question. There's a, what's the name of that? So right beside the nasal bone is we work laterally. What's the name of that one? Maxilla. Maxilla. We already named it. The maxilla actually stretches all the way up inside the nasal bone. Okay? You can, if you learn that order, then you'll be fine. Okay, so that's the maxilla. We've already labeled him. See this tiny little bone that's on the other side of the maxilla? That's called the lacrimal. Then, the one right beside him, he kind of occupies the medial side of that orbit. He's not very large from this view. That's the F board. Okay. See this bone that occupies a lot of the um, holes? Okay, like the holes kind of go through there? That's the sphenoid bone. The sphenoid bone is located next to the ethmoid, <coughs> and a lot of those holes 
hole of light inside that sphenoid. Okay. Then, what's right beside the sphenoid is the zygomatic. All right. This is how I remember it. Male lions eat skinny zebras. Okay. So if you remember that order, you'll be fine. Male lions eat. that same logic. What's that bone right there? Sphenoid. It's a trick question. <laughs> no, just right here, right here, right here. So the yellow is just my like sketch marks, but like this green little area right here, what's the name of that bone? Zygomatic. zygomatic. Okay, and this is totally a trick question, but the point there is that zygomatic actually occupies the lateral border of the orbit. It curves around. It's the same bone. I just drew this black line because it's a shadow, it's like an edge. So that's psychomatic, which means that, who's he? Sphenoid, he has to be sphenoid, okay? That's just the other side of the sphenoid that we can't see. So this guy is sphenoid. And that's all we can see from that angle. Those are the only two bones you can see from that orbit at this angle. No. Occipital. Mm, close. Can't see the occipital from this view. Temporal. Temporal. And this is where the order would come in nicely. Because if we work, we skipped over a couple. We know this is frontal. Okay? Then it goes parietal. And then you see this little bone that borders both the frontal and the parietal bone. This is actually another part of the sphenoid. Okay, the sphenoid is a very large bone that occupies a pretty big part of the skull. You can see a part of it inside the orbit, and you see another part of it right here. That's the lateral part. And if you look at your skull, you can, I mean, you can see that. That's pretty clear. See this little part? Right? There? That's the sphenoid. And then the sphenoid borders the temporal. Okay. Now let's use that same knowledge we just learned about, and we'll move over here. What's this ball? Maxilla. What is this ball? That's your occipital. What about this guy? Sphenoid. Sphenoid. That's that little part of the sphenoid. Okay. What about this little guy right here on top of the nose? Nasal bone. Nasal. That's maxilla. Pretty obvious there. He stretches up. Mm -hmm. What about this little guy beside the maxilla? Lateral bone. And then next to him, ethmoid. And that's all you can see from that view. That lateral view, you can't see the sphenoid. Uh -huh. um, he's, too, he's too deep in that in that skull. But yeah, mandibles down there. I held off. That's right, this is a mandible. Because we're going to need to learn the parts of a couple of bones, especially for the other parts of the body. But the mandible is one of those bones that we need to learn the parts for. Okay. And this is about the level of detail that I'll, I'll expect for you guys to know. Um, so the parts of bones, we'll do in a different color. We will do it in, how about, I left all my good markers in other class. Um, oh, if you knew the light blue, light blue will work. If you knew that'll work. Yeah. Yes. What is this right here? This is your um, sphenoid, right? So that's what you're feeling right there. Uh, it, isn't it a temple? Yeah, it's temple, right? 
right, it's your temple. But you're really feeling... It's that? different than the temple. Right, yeah, yeah. Temple is just like a common name for that part of your, your head, right? Just like, you know. But what you're feeling is you can kind of feel the edge of your orbit. That's your zygomatic <laughs> arch. You know, that's what you're feeling right there. See, that's the zygomatic as it comes up. I mean, you can kind of see it, right? That's your zygomatic bones extend up. And it's just posterior to that is the soft tissue of your temple, which ultimately deep to that is your sphenoid. But there's a lot of muscle and, you know, and all that in there. Okay. This part of the mandible is called the body. This part right here is like the arm that extends down. It's called the ramus. See this little part right here that articulates with the skull? That's called the condylar process. So the condylar process is right here. Uh. <coughs> See that little point right there? It serves as the attachment site for muscles. That's your coronal. got two holes for ramina that serve as passageways for blood vessels and nerves. We got one from this view, about right there. From this view, you got one right here and one like right over there. These guys, they're in the mental region, the mental foramen. <coughs> Like up here? Yes, that's right. So we can talk about the foramen here. So you've got one, you've got a foramen. Oh, that's so pretty. You got one right here, one right here, one right here, one right here. This one right up here, he's actually super short. It's a hole, but he's not that long. All he does is he just bypasses the corner of your orbit. He just stretches from here, da 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 da, and just skips that cord. <laughs> that provides the nerves. We'll learn about this in A and P two. These nerves that allow us to feel and control our face muscles. They'll come out from our orbit and they'll skip that corner because if they went around that corner, think about how easy it would be for them to get damaged every time. Ow. You would like, uh, you know, poke your yourself or something. But the name of these guys. This is the supra orbital foramen. Supra above orbital to orbit. Foramen. It's a hole. So it's the foramen just means hole. So this is the supra orbital foramen. And that's that is just an abbreviation for that. If that's the supra orbital, what do you think he's called? Okay. Infra orbital. Orbital foramen. Infra below orbital to orbit foramen. Talk about these guys. See how you have a circular hole that's more medial, more towards the nose than the other two? That guy is your optic canal. That's where your optic nerve passes through, also the ophthalmic artery. You don't need to know that for the test, just, like, just know it's the optic canal, right? We'll learn about what goes through an AMP2. So that's the optic canal, it's a little hole, it's more medial. All right. See these other two holes? They look like slits. So the name of a slit-like hole is called a fissure. A fissure is the name of a slit-like hole. You 
you got one that's above and you got one that's below. This is a superior orbital fissure. Superior, it's above, orbital, it's in the orbit, fissure. Okay? It's a slit like hole that's on the top of the orbit. So superior orbital fissure. F I S S. You are a what do you think this guy's name is? Inferior orbital fissure. Okay. Where the where the large flat bones come together, they form a joint that's called a suture. It's an immovable joint. We need to know the names of the sutures. Okay. Um, they're actually not that bad. You got a suture right here that forms the division between the frontal and the parietal. It looks like a crown going over the forehead. That's called the coronal suture. Remember the coronal uh, uh, section comes in like that? This is the coronal suture. And so I'm just going to ask this abbreviation. Suture is produced by the union of the temporal bone and the parietal bone. Squamous suture. The suture that is made by the uh, union of the occipital bone with the two parietal bones. So, see the occipital bone? Right here, occipital, two parietals, so it's this suture right here, it looks like a little triangle, lambda suture. The two parietal bones come together and they form a suture that goes right on top of the head, right here, I can't really draw it, but I'll point, kind of like semi-point to it. That's called the sagittal suture, sagittal, sagittal section, that's not a pretty easy. So this is, I'll draw it right here, this is the sagittal suture. Oh, a couple more things. See this hole right here? The hole? What, what is that? Where is that? Why do we have a hole in our skull? Here, canal. Okay. The name of that hole is called the external acoustic meatus. A meatus is just the name for a tunnel-like hole. External, it's on the outside. Acoustic, that's where sound goes in. A tunnel-like hole on the outside of the skull where sound goes in. <coughs> so, external acoustic meatus. is in the skull, it's going to be like the big hole right there. Right there, wherever the ear goes in, it's your ear from now. Right there. You see that bump that's right behind the external acoustic meatus, this little bump right here? That's called the mastoid foramen. No, no, mastoid process. If you have a nice model, you'll notice that you have this little pointy thing right beside the mastoid process. That's your styloid process. It's just an attachment site for muscles of our tongue and throat. And that and that's all I can ever point to from these from those views. Right? I mean it seems like a lot when you look at it like that, but we built it up slow. So a couple I mean honestly it's really not that bad. You just hit it a couple of times.